When done correctly, working up to one rep max is not ego lifting. It's called the max effort method. And there are many benefits for strength athletes or recreational lifters who simply want to put up crazy numbers. So this video will cover some of the uncommon points that you don't really hear many trainers discussing because they're not strong and have no experience with the method. So let me first say that in terms of setting percentages, knowing what you'll be doing for the rest of your program, whether that be short term or long term, the one rep max, which is the absolute demonstration of your all out grinding performance, sets everything. It's precisely why the most basic routines, whether they're free or paid, ask you the following question. What's your one or max squat, bench, deadlift? And then boom, the calculations and numbers appear. You just follow the template and get brutally strong in that process. So what happens when you don't know the number? Oh, you guess. You might plug in your five to six rep max. It'll give you a certain number, but if you never train with the higher percentages, you can't confirm that you can lift that. So what usually happens is you'll waste a couple weeks playing around with incorrect percentages. The weights will feel slightly heavier and you have to dabble a lot more with auto-regulation strategies. And this has been one of the main criticisms of percentage-based programs. People say because you cannot accurately judge your one at max since it changes day to day, as in your fatigue levels affect this, the specificity of constantly working up to waste that heavy, since we can't account for the fact that we're not constantly doing that, percentages must somehow be flawed. And therefore, we have to abbreviate it and resort to using RPE most of the time. Well, here's a train of thought. What if... We max out at the start of our workout this way, there is never any guessing games. So rather than lifting weights by feel or using the same arbitrary numbers that aren't giving you any gains, get precise. If your one or max bench is 300 pounds for your back off work, you can now multiply that top number by around 0.70. So now you're lifting 70% of your one or max and you can now get your hypertrophy work in. That's where the volume is accumulated. And what happens if you've been using a certain exercise for a number of weeks? You gotta switch it up. Now you're clueless. What weights do I have to hit? Sure, you can play around with it in the warmups. You can continuously increase the numbers as the weeks pass by, but are you really making gains or simply demonstrating what you already had? People talk all the time about building versus testing strength. Yet I find it so hypocritical that many of these criticizers do the exact same thing they're not lifting the appropriate weights for that session. They were capable of more almost every fucking time. They slowly ease their way in, baby themselves with the excuse that they're gonna somehow get injured. No, if you refrain from ego lifting, use correct technique, you don't go above say three to four attempts in a workout, you do not exceed 100%, there's no failure going on, you know when to stop, you hit a peak weight for that session, that is your training max, then everything that falls after that point is very likely not going to get you injured. And you start to build a history with all your exercises. The one rep maxes are all lined up. And moving forward, you can accurately judge your percentages because you never stop maxing out. You want to talk about specificity of training you want to discuss what power building is really all about. It's the combination of heavy lifting with volume. And that doesn't have to be in blocks. It could be done year round as you have consistently seen me do for years and years now. Getting to a four or five bench press, naturally, no f***ing injuries. You tell me how that works out if general strength doesn't apply. Yeah, general strength doesn't apply. Yet... You've seen all my max effort attempts on Instagram. You've seen the workout videos. Strength is strength. How many more guys need to show up and prove that to you? And maxing out is the simplest, purest expression of lifting heavy to the point where you don't even need doubles, triples, and fives. Do singles and higher reps. Watch how big and strong you get. Like you got the maximum motor unit recruitment you practice the skill of maxing out because it actually is a skill in that regard. It's not strength endurance. It's literally all out. The most specific thing you could possibly do in a strength competition. It's one-to-one, -one, perfect in this regard. And 
that skill is developed on any press, any squat, any deadlift, if it's 100%, it works. Heck, even the muscle emphasis changes when you go this heavy. Like on the bench press, the triceps get much more involved. When you get closer to your one or max, the higher the percentage, the more tries. And that's what many powerlifters have been saying for years. And it took some science to confirm this was actually true. And so if you go heavy on the bench, you probably don't have to go heavy on your tricep extensions. You can literally just do reps of eight to 12, 15 to 20, pump it out, not get any elbow discomfort, and still get jacked, still get the carryover. Because what you're trying to do is hypertrophy that weak link. And I know that in this video, I'm talking a lot about presses, but understand this is universal. It applies to any strength sport, any movement. Anyway, there's a lot of rambling in this video, but I'm just annoyed with all the lies that many weak trainers who have zero experience with the max effort method love to spew, talking out of their ass 100% of the time. And it's crazy because they always reference idiotic gym bros to prove their point. Guys who come in, load up two plates on the bar, they try to get that for their first time, and then they have a spotter right behind them, it's all you bro, and they're pressing on it, and the guy's training, it's like, oh, crazy form. That's not what the method is about. It's about technique refinement, getting familiar with the movements, confident under a bar, constantly breaking records, and having a chart of references to look after. And you can go back and try to break your record by what? No, not 45 pounds, five pounds. If you haven't been to a lift in like six, eight weeks, you don't go ham on it unless you're absolutely certain that you can do it as you're warming up. But it's a gradual freaking process. And this is why one of maxes get a bad rep because people don't even understand how to properly do it. So if you want to learn some things, check out my workout videos, check out my videos on max effort misconceptions and how to properly use the method. So that's it. Gave you a couple extra reasons why you should do this. I think this is extremely valuable for the organization of training. It simplifies the entire process. And you know what? It works. Top single, back down to work, hypertrophy through the accessories. What more could you ask for? Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you all next time.